Resident Evil 4 Remake sucks. I hate it. Is what I would probably say if I was being intentionally contrarian. But I'm not. So what are my real thoughts? Well, Resident Evil 4 still seems to be a hot topic everyone is raving about, especially with the release of Separate Ways and the upcoming Game Awards. The game has received near-universal praise, but does it deserve it? After putting in almost 100 hours, I feel I'm ready to answer that question. The game pretty much exceeded my expectations, however it isn't perfect. If you're one of the 14 or so people that watched my video where I covered the 5 things I was most looking forward to in the RE4 remake, you'll find that for the most part all the boxes have been checked. The first point was expanded lore. Now if I'm honest I've never been a huge fan of RE4's story, simply because it was such a deviation from the familiarity of the T-Virus in Raccoon City. Umbrella is taken down off screen, Leon suddenly thrust into some European village that's connected to a giant castle and not far from a crazy military lab island. Sure. So something I was hoping for in the remake was that Capcom would give us a little bit to chew on regarding how and why everything is how it is in this remote area of the world. And they did that. There are a plethora of notes, items, and in-game dialogue that expand on the village, Luis, the Salazar family, and even the lineage of Sadler and the discovery of Las Plagas. Honestly, it was awesome to read some of this stuff and piece together the timeline and connections. The second thing I was looking forward to was the new iteration of the classic RE4 Merchant. In my opinion, Capcom really nailed it with the Duke in RE Village, so I was excited to see what they took from that and brought into this game. While they didn't exactly implement him in the story the way they did with the Duke, they did expand on his dialogue significantly and make him feel like more of a guiding figure. Not to mention the awesome new spin on the shooting gallery. While I didn't exactly find it challenging to get S ranks on each one, the music and general theme of the gallery was a blast to experience. The new charm system is a little funky in that it's a fixed set of charms per playthrough rather than actual random chance. I understand why they'd implement something like that to stop people from reloading and farming the best charms in a playthrough, but it still doesn't sit right with me. The next item on the list was how the enemies would be reimagined. The Ganados, for the most part, are all good. They have different Plaga stages that give the game a little more diversity compared to the original. They've introduced these brute characters that are tougher than the average enemy, but not as tough as, say, Dr. Salvador. Most of the enemies stay pretty consistent to their original counterparts, just with cool graphical upgrades. The Verdugo you fight, for instance, is very intimidating looking and reminiscent of a xenomorph from the Alien franchise. Sadler's redesign is a lot cooler looking than the original too. However, I'm admittedly not the biggest fan of Ramon Salazar's new look. I mean, I understand why they've done it, but I think at this point his original look is just too iconic to replace him with Hillary Clinton? Number 4 is the weapons. RE4 Remake brings back all the old classics, plus a newer, realistic take on the Silver Ghost. That's right, the SG-09R is Leon's new starting pistol, and it's a modified USP. I love it. I want it. The rest of the guns are much the same. However, they added a few things that are basically just reused assets from the previous remakes, such as the AR and the MP5. Nothing too crazy. The laser sight is an optional feature now and can only be used on a few handguns. I like the realism, but some of the guns suffer from the crosshair bloom and artificial aim wobble. One such victim is the hand cannon, a Smith & Wesson 500 that was also in the original game. As one of the final guns you'll likely unlock, this weapon isn't great. Even when upgraded to the max, the gun is wildly inaccurate unless you're up close and frankly, not all that powerful. Again, at this point in the game, you've basically unlocked everything else, so why punish us by making the hand cannon sort of suck? Who knows? The fifth and final thing I was looking for was improved horror. I never really found Resident Evil 4 to be all that scary. Sure, there were some scary aspects, like the regenerators, 
but mostly I found the enemies and setting to be suited to the more action-based game that RE4 is. That doesn't really change in the remake. Sure, the improved lighting and graphics help the atmosphere quite a lot, but at its heart it's still the RE4 of old, with super agents and spies roundhouse kicking villagers in the face and jumping on the back of giants to slash at them with knives. There are even some aspects of the original Resident Evil 4 that I would say are scarier than the remake, such as the infected dogs. With those main points of mine out of the way, here are a few other random things I'd like to touch on. For starters, they dialed back the cheesiness of the original a bit. Now, I didn't want them to completely ruin Leon's RE4 personality and quips, but I definitely wanted them to remove some of the ridiculous stuff such as the Salazar statue chasing you like a giant nutcracker automaton. I think they balanced it well, and it helped ground the game a bit more. On that same note, the newer games are suffering a little from what I like to call reference fatigue. I love a nod to old things just as much as the next guy, but we really need to stop putting actual lines of old dialogue into the new games. I might lose my mind a little if I hear Jill Sandwich or Master of Unlocking one more time, and that's saying a lot because Jill is my favorite character. They're hilarious and iconic lines from the first game, and I'm not saying they can't be referenced, but maybe let's do some new references and make them a little bit more subtle. The music in this game is phenomenal. I love the reimagined themes like the El Gigante boss music and the shooting gallery bonus soundtrack. This extends to separate ways as well. The combat is great, and the pairing system is actually really nice. Does it belong in a traditional Resident Evil game? Probably not. But for RE4 and its remake, I quite like it. Leon's RE engine model is fine. Good even. But I wish they would do something so the lighting isn't constantly making him look like he has a unibrow. I don't think I've seen anyone else mention this, so maybe it's just me? Not sure. Ashley is a much better character and companion in this remake. Her voice acting is great and her sequences, while annoying on repeat plays, were much better than the original. All of the extra bonus content that is unlockable through repeat plays is a nice touch and gives you a reason to 100% the game. Side missions add another layer to the game and encourage you to explore more, something I really enjoyed. However, separate ways just really isn't my thing. I've never been a simp for Ada Wong. In fact, she is probably down near the bottom of my list of favorite Resident Evil characters. Being able to see what she was doing during the events of RE4 and how she helped Leon along the way is cool and all, but something about having futuristic contacts that let her see footprints along with their grappling hook just does not vibe with Resident Evil to me. Her new voice actress really threw me off in the main game, but throughout the duration of Separate Ways, I grew accustomed to it. I still don't think it's entirely fitting, but it's definitely not worth harassing the actress over. The DLC is admittedly better than the original Separate Ways with a couple new areas and bosses, but it should be, given the original was a free part of the game and this is a paid add-on. The new Wesker is interesting, but it's hard to really form a solid opinion from the scarce amount of screen time we got. He seems alright for now. Not as goofy as OG Wesker, not as iconic as DC Douglas, but somewhere between. Overall, I'm neutral on separate ways. Don't get me wrong, more Resident Evil is always good, and Ada is a bit more likable here, but overall it's very milk toast. That about wraps it up for my review of Resident Evil 4. As you can tell, I do really enjoy this game, and I've sunk many hours into it, probably until my eyes bled. Was it perfect? No. And it's never going to be as good as the originals to me, just because at its core, Resident Evil 4 changed everything, as I'm sure you all know. That said, it probably is my personal game of the year. I'm excited to see if everyone else thinks so as well, or if contenders like Baldur's Gate 3 might pull the rug out from underneath RE4's feet. As always, thank you for watching, and stay tuned because I would like to get back into the YouTube game, and I do have many more guns to show you guys. Appreciate it. Thanks.